Created by Rick Berman and Michael Piller, Deep Space Nine premiered in 1993 and quickly became my favourite series in the Star Trek universe. From the beginning, the series was given its own distinct look and feel and it certainly was a darker and grittier vision than what the viewer was used to, but the fundamental core of the characters still had the same noble, honourable and heroic qualities of the original series and the next generation, qualities that held true to Gene Roddenberry's vision of what Star Trek should be. Like its predecessor, Deep Space Nine's first season was a little shaky, though overall it was far superior to the next generation's first. Before we get to my top five, an honourable mention goes to episodes like Captive Pursuit, Battle Lines, Past Prologue, Progress and The Storyteller. But on to the top five for season one. At number five in the hands of the prophets, Vedic Wynne protested the teachings of scientific theories at the station school. When Vedic Boreal arrives at the station to calm the situation, an unsuccessful assassination attempt is made in his life. At number four, Vortex. A member of a Miradorn pair is killed by a fugitive named Crodon. The Miradorn demands his immediate execution, but Crodon escapes. Before he does, he gives a shape-shifting material to Odo, evidence that Odo may have originated in the Gamma Quadrant. At number three, Emissary. Commander Benjamin Sisko arrives at Deep Space Nine. He pressures the local business leaders to remain at the station. Sisko then discovers a stable wormhole that links the Alpha Quadrant to the Gamma Quadrant. At number two, Dax. Jadzia is arrested and accused of a murder that was supposedly committed years earlier by Curzon Dax. Chief O'Brien is notably missing from this episode as Colin Meany was in Ireland filming The Snapper. And at number one, Duet. Gulder Heel, a former head of her Cardassian neighbour camp, is held at the station. While investigating, Kira finds out that it is not in fact our heel, but Maritza, their heel servant. Maritza, sickened by the atrocities of the labour camp, decided to impersonate the now dead Darheel and confess to his crimes. Season 2 saw the series really find its footing and though the following didn't make my top 5, a nod goes to The Circle, Blood Oat, Cardassians, The Wire and Invasive Procedures. My top 5 for Season 2 are At number 5, The Gem Hadar While on a camping expedition in the Gamma Quadrant, Sisko and Quark are captured by Gem Hadar soldiers. This is the first contact with the Dominion. At 4, the Maquis. When a Cardassian freighter blows up at DS9, Cardassian authorities blame it on the Maquis. Ducat, unofficially assisting with the investigation, is abducted and Sisko commands a rescue mission. A tree crossover. Kira and Bashir suffer a collapsed warp field in the wormhole, sending them into the mirror universe. The same universe visited by Kirk and crew a century earlier. A two necessary evil. A Bajoran woman named Palra tries to obtain a list of Bajoran nationalists who collaborated with the Cardassians during the occupation. And at number one, Whispers. The Paradan authorities warn Sisko that O'Brien is in fact a duplicate programmed to disrupt the upcoming peace talks. Season 3 sees another solid season featuring episodes like The Search, The Abandoned, Past Tense, The Adversary and Defiant. But my top five for season three are... At number 5, Destiny. A Bajoran Cardassian science team tests a subspace system to permit communications within the Gamma Quadrant through the wormhole. At 4, the House of Quark. A Klingon named Kozak is accidentally killed at Quark's bar. His widow, Grilka, believing that Quark killed him, makes Quark her new mate. At 3, Improbable Cause. An assassination attempt is made on Garrick's life. An investigation by Odo reveals that it was the work of Tain, a former head of the Obsidian Order, as part of his plan to regain power. At two, the die is cast. The Romulan and Cardassian fleet is ambushed near the Founder's world and all but wiped out. Tain is presumed to be among the casualties. At number one, through the looking glass, Sisko is abducted by O'Brien from the alternate universe. Sisko's mission is to persuade the Mirror Jennifer to stop working for the Alliance. Season 4 not only sees Avery Brooks return to his classic shaved head and the introduction of Worf, but it's also one of the most consistent seasons of Star Trek. A superb mix of episodes including Starship Down, Way of the Warrior, Rules of Engagement, For the Cause and To the Death. But my top 5 for season 4 are At 5, Homefront. With the continuing threat of a Dominion attack, Sisko, Dax and Odo are recalled to Earth where Sisko is made head of Starfleet security. At 4, Paradise Lost. Sisko uncovers evidence that the power failure, taught to be the work of Dominion agents, was in fact engineered by Admiral Leighton. A tree to quickening. Responding to a distress call from the Teplin system, Bashir learns that the people suffer from a disease known as the Blight. 
a too hard time. Accused of espionage, O'Brien has artificial memories implanted in his mind. These memories make him believe that he has been in prison for 20 years, when it in fact only has been a few hours. And at number one, The Visitor. An elderly Jake Sisko tells the story of the tragic death of his father years earlier on The Defiant. Not only is this one of the finest hours of Deep Space Nine, it is one of the finest hours of Star Trek ever produced. Season 5 is another superb season, featuring such gems as Looking for Parmac in All the Wrong Places, Blaze of Glory, A Call to Arms, Things Past, and Ties of Blood and Water. But my top 5 for Season 5 are At 5, Children of Time. When the crew beam down to a planet, they find that the inhabitants are their descendants. The result of an anomaly that caused the Defiant to crash land on the planet 200 years earlier. 4. In Purgatory Shadow When Garrick receives a message from his mentor Tain, he goes with Worf to attempt a rescue. They are quickly captured by the Jem'Hadar and put in prison where they meet Tain along with the real Martok and Dr. Bashir. A tree by Inferno's light. Ducat announces that Cardassia is now part of the Dominion and he vows to retake the station. Meanwhile, Bashir and Garrick work on a way of escaping while Worf is used as a training tool for the Jem'Hadar. A two in the cards. With war imminent, Kaiwin arrives at the station to begin talks with Weyoun about a non-aggression pact with the Dominion. Seeing his father's mood, Jake tries to buy him an ancient baseball card at an auction. And at number one, Trials and Tribulations. While carrying a Bajoran ore back to the station, the Defiant and her crew are thrown back 105 years in the past, the time of Captain Kirk. They must stop an assassination attempt on Kirk's life and at the same time not interfere with the timeline. Season 6 is easily the greatest of the series. It featured outstanding episodes like Behind the Lines, Honour Among Thieves, Wrongs Darker Than Day or Night, Statistical Probabilities and Inquisition. These are my top 5 picks for Season 6. At 5, A Time to Stand. It has been 6 months since the beginning of the war and things do not go well for the Federation. Sisko and crew were given a mission to destroy a Ketracel White facility deep in Cardassian space. At four rocks and shoals, Sisko and crew crash land on a planet and find a troop of Jem'Hadar who have also crashed. With the Vorta dying and the Ketracel White running out, the Vorta comes up with a plan which sees Sisko facing a moral dilemma. A tree tears of the prophets. Starfleet gives Sisko to go ahead to plan an offensive against the Dominion Cardassian Empire. Before they set off on their mission, Sisko gets a warning from the Prophets not to leave the station, but he chooses to ignore it. At two in the pale moonlight, realising that the war is going badly for the Federation, and receiving news that the Dominion now have conquered Beta Z, Sisko, with the aid of Garrick, attempt to convince the Romulans to join in on the fight. And at number one, far beyond the stars, Sisko finds himself in the 1950s as Benny Russell, a science fiction writer. While there, he starts to write a story about a space station with a black captain, something which does not go down well with his editor. Season 7, while not as strong as 6, still produced a lot of powerful episodes, including Till Death Do Us Part, Strange Bedfellows, The Changing Face of Evil, It's Only a Paper Moon, and Once More Onto the Breach. But my top 5 picks for the final season are At number 5, Chimera. When a runabout is boarded by an unknown shapeshifter, Odo recognises it as one of the hundred changelings who were sent out into space hundreds of years earlier. At 4, the siege of AOR 558. Sisko and the Defiant arrive at outpost AOR 558, bringing them much-needed medical supplies. The crew of the outpost are under constant attack from the Dominion. Sisko and the DS9 crew stand with them for one last assault from the Jem'Hadar. At 3, inter arma enem silent leges. In war, laws fall silent. Forced into taking part in an undercover operation by a sinister and dangerous operative from Section 31, Bashir travels to Romulus to spy on the head of the Tal Shiar. At 2, the series finale, What You Leave Behind. In the hours before the final battle of the war, the crew prepare for victory or death. And at number 1, Treachery, Faith and the Great River. When Weyoun asks Odo for asylum, Odo does not believe him. It turns out, however, that Weyoun is genuine and is prepared to tell Starfleet about Dominion strategies. Although Deep Space Nine expertly commented on topics like terrorism and religious extremism, at its heart it was a show about ordinary people in extraordinary situations. Strip away the starships, stations and the alien races, and what is left is a series about how to be human. Thanks for watching, until the next time, hailing frequencies closed. If you liked what you saw, please hit the like and subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell too. Thank you.